Harley? He was just on. Mr. Kerr? Present. Mrs. Leeper? Present. Mrs. Lowry? Present. Mr. Shrove? Here. Okay, uh, Jared, let's keep an eye on uh, Tom and see if he shows up here after a bit. I believe he probably will. Um, I'd like to thank everybody yes, for coming out tonight and welcome you all to our uh, virtual meeting tonight for the Indiana School Board. Um, I, do, I don't have a formal board uh, president message, but I do, before we start the meeting, I, I did make some notes that I think are important that we uh, kind of point out this evening. Number one, I want the public and, and everybody that's on this call to understand the amount of work that has been done in an extremely short period of time. In the last two months, we have essentially re completely reinvented how we as a school district are going to deliver our education and our educational services and programming uh, to the community and to our students. I don't know anybody that really could have done something this extensive in this short a period of time for a, a system that is as complicated as, as what we have. And I want to thank the board individually and collectively, the administration individually and collectively, and the association individually and collectively for all of their support and all of their help in getting us to the point where we are today. I believe that what's going to happen is that once this COVID pandemic either recedes or goes away, that many of the changes that we are uh, implementing to combat that pandemic are ones that will maybe stick with this uh, district for um, the long term and for many, many years to come. Um, at that point, again, thank you all for coming and thank everybody that's been working on these plans uh, for their help and their support. Uh, Jared, I think public comment is up next. Do we have anybody signed up for that? I believe we have one person, and uh, Mr. Vukovic has the name. Yeah, I, um, Mr. Heinrich, I know I asked you to have the adult Mr. Springer and Mr. Urbani follow up with that individual. I don't know if he's on the line or not. Are Mr. you aware? Huntington, I believe, is Mr. Huntington present? Yes, this is Paul Huntington. I am online. Good, good evening, sir. Um, we got your. Um, we got your email. Uh, you, you submitted a question regarding kindergarten, and we wanted to make sure that you had an opportunity to speak to Mr. Banny and or Mr. Springer. And if not, we can, you know, hear you out this evening, and we wanted to defer to you, sir, and see if there's any other comments you needed or for your needs were addressed, sir. Um, I have not as of yet uh, had a chance to speak to them um, about this issue. Obviously, I just put that request in yesterday in uh, preparation for tonight's meeting. Um, I guess in general, uh, I've gone through and read the district-wide plan at this point um, for what we are planning to do in various classrooms. And I was, I think in general, uh, kind of the question is, uh, how do we plan in general for the socialization, right? And the acclimation to school that is so important for kindergartners. I have a, a son that would be going into kindergarten this year, and I'm trying to decide if it is worth sending him to kindergarten this year or holding him back a year. So any information you can provide to me about kind of what you guys are expecting and planning uh, would be helpful. But I will definitely follow up with uh, Principal Urbani and uh, Mr. Springer as well, if, if necessary. What I think we could do, sir, is a couple things. I'll defer to you uh, how you want to proceed. I think what I would recommend at this point, if you don't mind, um, I know you email me. I can look at that, or if you don't mind, email me uh, with your phone number, and I can have Mr. Banny or and or Mr. Springer call you this evening and address some of your questions. What we could do from there is once you speak to them, then sometime later this week, and I can have our director of special ed call you um, what we're doing with you know social emotional learning. They could talk from the building level perspective, and then I can have our director of special ed call you as well if that helps that way you have the you know as much time as you need 
to ask your questions. We can have a dialogue if that's okay with you, sir. Yes, that would be fine. Thank you. Okay. Yep, just please email me and, and sir, expect the call. Uh, Mr. Bainey, Mr. Springer, I see you on the call. So I, I have no doubt you'll call them this evening. You guys can do a uh, three-way call. And then when you're done, jump back on to this meeting. Fair enough? So, Sounds sir, good. if you could just email me, I'll get that out while the meeting's going on. Okay, sir? All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Have a good day, sir. You as well. Okay, sir. Thank you for your public comment. Um, uh, next up is uh, reports from the IAE ASME SGA or STUCA. Do we have any of those representatives online tonight? Uh, it's Paul McHugh, Mr. Schroth. Uh, no comment tonight. Um, thank you very much. Okay, Paul, thank you. Uh, any of the others? Nothing heard. Superintendent's report. Mike, you're up. Yeah, thank you, sir. I just want to pull up something real quick. Um, so th uh, thank you, Mr. President. I know this may be hard to see. I will try to um, zoom in the best I can. And if not, I can always at least get this to the uh, the board at a later at a later date. Uh, I apologize. Give me one second. So I don't want to take too much of your time uh, this evening, but I do uh, want to do two big things. Number one, as we talk about reopening, we talk about the new phase. I can't thank the public and everyone for asking good, honest questions. I understand the trepidation and some concerns they may have, but we're working to address them the best we can. But I, I do, as we talk about cyber schools, I do want to talk out because, again, uh, last week we talked about it, one cyber school having an $81 million dollar. Uh, general fund reserve aside and what you have to really do is start looking at that and I thought rather than keep talking about it because it doesn't seem to pick up any traction um, when I asked it to be written about or looked into I wanted to show you real numbers and if you can't see it again I can I can share this with you but what you're looking at is the cyber cost from 1819 uh, from Senator Pittman's region as well as Representative Struzzi's uh, region and it's a pretty significant number and um, I'm having trouble zooming in somewhat, but I will try to get it there for you the best I can. So under Senator Pittman's, and now again, you have to understand his region is much bigger, but it includes our Indiana County neighbors. You're looking at almost $19 million in the 1819 school year uh, being taken away from public schools and given to charter schools, which have, as we all know, much, much smaller overhead. That's results in the large general fund balances like you see like we talked about last week. And then in Representative Struzzi's, you have a nearly $3.5 million being siphoned out of public education. So when you talk about the pandemic, you talk about the deficit and the impact it's having on public education, this money is more, more needed than ever, right? And it has a real impact. And again, we're not gonna sit here and say, should charter schools or cyber schools exist? That's not my, that's not my goal, is that's pretty clear in the PA code. What I think we should do and continue to do is advocate and advocate for you know fixing and adjusting the funding um, for these cyber cyber schools as their overhead far are, are far less than what it is for public education. And then when you look at the data, you look at the facts, and this isn't me. This is Stanford. This is other organizations talking about the fact they're losing a year to year and a half behind it. I think this is somewhat disappointing. So when you talk about needing resources and funds more than ever. Uh, you see it being siphoned away, and you have to ask yourself, what's that return on investment? And I think when you start looking at the real numbers, $3.5 million for our region, that can go far away to, when we talk about safety upgrades, when we talk about synchronized learning, when we talk about providing support to kids, extra resources. Uh, that money goes a lot of way. And the biggest um, fake news or false narrative out there is when people say uh, it's free to go to our cyber school. It's not free. There's an absolute cost to um, public education. There's an absolute cost towards our schools and it's a significant amount of money. So I just wanted to bring that attention to because I think we need to keep discussing this and keeping this at the forefront. Madam Vice President did a great job bringing up about the Auditor General's work, what they're doing there. Um, and now you see the impact here. There's also a local impact uh, to the tune. If you combine the two between the Representative Struzzi and, and Senator Pittman, you're looking at almost $16 million and, and it has an impact. 
Uh, I will say this. Rep Representative Struzzi and Senator Pittman have been good listeners. We have been advocating, and they have been nothing but cordial, polite, and responsive in listening to us. But I wanted to make you and the public aware because uh, there's real dollars at stake. And then when you look at that return on investment, and it's not my work. It's Stanford's work and other organizations' work. Uh, you'll see they're a year to year and a half behind. And then they often come back to public education. And we're trying to fill in those gaps and close those gaps. So it's it, it's an issue. I think there's a sense of urgency that we need to be aware of and understand what the numbers are and what that looks like for each and every school. And, you know, you can look at the numbers and look at Indiana. We're at a million dollars. But then you look at United, they're almost at a million dollars. And we're two to three times their size. So it has a significant impact on each school and it's relative, relative to each school. And I just wanted to make the board aware of that because – uh, we need you to be our biggest advocators and biggest you know, policy leaders. So when you're out there and people talk, ask you about the impact of cyber charters and we know the return on investment, you can say what it really does for us financially. Second thing I'd like to do, uh, Mr. President, is some upcoming dates, depending what the action, the board uh, action they take tonight. We're going to do a couple emails and communications with their families. Uh, and basically tomorrow I'd like to send out the health and safety plan. I like to think of more of the athletic plan, uh, the updated calendar, and then we're working to revise the survey, survey by the end of day tomorrow. We talked last week on Thursday at the academic committee, and the committee said, look, it may be in our best interest to new new survey now that people may have a clearer understanding. Uh, and we'll talk about that tonight, but we'll, we'd like to spend all day tomorrow, get some feedback on it, get it done, get some feedback on it, and try to send it out. So we want to make our families aware of tomorrow. We'll send out those uh, four pieces of information. We're also going to work on a video uh, and try to get out later this week that explains each one of those documents in a little bit more detail. So after I had a chance to review it, hopefully the presentation or the video may clarify some things. On August 6th, uh, we are going to try to send out building videos, send out to families what we're asking our principals to work on. And we just talked to them today, so they need some time. It is to work on uh, almost like an introduction to their orientation to their building for the upcoming school year so families understand what some of their safety protocols are. Yes, we embedded them in our plan, but we thought maybe a video would help go a long way illustrating what, maybe what, a, what a classroom looks like, what our masking um, policies are going to be at lunch, what, you know, and go over a little bit more detail that's site-specific and give families a little bit more clarity. That's our hope. And then August 10th, what we think we're going to do is then try to set up uh, a building town hall meetings where after the parents have seen the video on, on or about August 6th, August 10th, they can come in and ask some clarifying question. Our goal is not to take people's time up. Our goal is to inform and communicate, and hopefully the videos will do go a long way in doing that. But if not, August 10th will be dedicated for some time for Q&A for the principals to really have some conversations with families virtually uh, that really helps them uh, get to the heart of what our plan looks like. So we wanted to share those two things. And additionally, um, you know, I wanted to be clear again tonight. You're we're approving, reapproving the reopening plans that we developed. Uh, you know, we think it's quite clear. Uh, I know some may not, and then we have some work to do on the area of synchronous learning. But we're looking at three big things once once again: the traditional model, the hybrid model, which Mr. Heinrich explained on Thursday, and then the cyber model. So really, that what's encompassing in our plan. We spent, I think, uh, a significant amount of time. Uh, talking about that between last Monday and last Thursday. And I want to make the public aware of that. And we encourage the public to continue to reach out. We had a lot of great parents reach out asking clarifying questions, and we want to continue to allow them that, that outlet so they can get their questions answered uh, and that we can work with families. Now, the one thing is some families may be upset if we send an additional survey out, but we'll preface that in our letter explaining to them that we want to be clear um, where the, what the intent behind is the updated survey. And we have some things to work, at our, work out on our end, but we'll try to get that done uh, tomorrow. And lastly, sir, uh, I just want to make the board aware, and you know, Liz, uh, Attorney Benjamin can add in when it's during her time. We want to be a, a clear about the governor's and the second Department of Health recent orders of 25 more in a setting. It doesn't apply to school classrooms, but it does apply to board meetings. So when people say, look, Mike, why are you continuing to do the board meetings uh, virtually, when we have 60, 70, 50 people in a room, uh, we couldn't do that live because of the limitation. So this allows an outlet for people to still be able to attend and hear what's going on. And we think that's most conducive uh, to the folks at this time. Now, we also know things at the Department of Health have been changing drastically. Last Thursday, we had a, we discussed as a group, had a plan, and we said, look, temperature checks are going to be a part of our plan, both staff and students. And then the next morning, the CDC came out at 10 a.m. said, look, you don't have to do temperature checks. At this point, I still say we stay the course. 
monitor situation and in the plan it's very clear it's fluid and it can change as needed so we just want to continue to involve the board make parents aware i apologize for all emails to all the parents in advance but we're trying to do the best to keep them aware of the ever-changing uh landscape that we're working with sir with that that's all i have and i uh, I appreciate the board's leadership and as well as everyone's help in making sure we have a plan that uh, families can review and decide for themselves what they think is the best option for their child. And we built it with the mind of flexibility and compassion. And I, I hope we met that goal, sir. Okay, Mike, thank you. The only thing I would ask of you is that, um, particularly in light of uh, this pandemic, uh, that for our first meeting in August, uh, you prepare a resolution uh, for the board to vote on requesting the governor and the legislature uh, to revisit the funding of cyber schools and making it more equitable. I know we did one here not too long ago, but as, as the world keeps changing, I think we need to um, um, go ahead and um, um, keep that pressure on, if, if nothing else. Um, at, at this point, I'll turn it over to Elizabeth. Uh, she's here sitting in for Ron. Uh, Elizabeth, do you have a solicitor report for us tonight? Yes, hello. Good evening, everyone. I uh, will miss your superintendent's comments uh, as one matter of clarification we wanted to provide as part of the solicitor's report regarding the guidance issued by the Department of Health jointly with the Department of Education relative to the impact of some of the limitations imposed upon schools, one of which has been identified as not applying as the 25 person indoor limit, as your superintendent mentioned. Um, it's applicable to public board meetings, but it's not obviously going to be ap applicable inside of schools. Well, I know you're going to be hearing about this um, oh, quite a bit later and I've been talking about it for some time now, but in the past 12 days, uh, we've had uh, two significant items of guidance issued on July 15th, 2020, was the issuance of the Pennsylvania Department of Health and Pennsylvania Department of Education's clarification on school reopening, which gave um, some much needed guidance, if not late in the game. And then a week later on July 23rd, uh, we had the issuance of the CDC's guidance, which for the most part had some consistencies, but as your superintendent noted, um, quite a few differences. And so we can't emphasize enough the unprecedented pace at which your administration and your officials are working to um, make sure you have the most up-to-date and workable uh, health and safety plan. And we're trying to work to help guide our clients through that. Um, one element of the CDC guidance that we'll point out for um, everyone's benefit is that they do have a number of uh, links and resources, not only for K through 12 schools and administrators, but also for parents and teachers, uh, checklists on making decisions with regard to returning your child to school. And it can be a helpful resource for those that are interested in learning more about it. It sounds like you as a district have a great deal of uh, public education com planned coming up in August, and we would commend you on that. And um, are in agreement with plans to stay the course right now, always understanding the caveat that things can change um, in these types of conditions. And we can certainly help answer any questions along the way as we proceed through the agenda. But that was the, the majority of our report for this evening. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, there are no presentations this evening. May I have, uh, we're on to item number three. May I have a motion to approve uh, the minutes in the agenda, please? So moved. Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Um, at this point, we'll again vote in the negative. If you uh, choose to oppose the, the motion, uh, please say uh, no at this point in time. Okay, the chair assumes that the silence is unanimous approval of the minutes in the agenda. Next, we have item number four, board reports. Indiana Technology Center, Uta, you're up. Um, we have not had a meeting, so I have no report. Okay, and Barb's not here for IU28. Uh, Mike, do you have anything? Uh, or Rob, do you have anything on, on IU28? 
No, sir, I don't on IU-28, but I will say for the note of um, we're losing someone very important to us. Dr. May is going to be retiring from the Community Guidance Center. Um, and I issued a letter. I wrote a letter today, Mr. President, that I'd like you to sign, wishing him well and thanking him for all his great work that he did for us. Uh, I know he doesn't work for the IU-28, but what you've seen is a lot of interagency collaboration and working together. And he's a big loss, and he's a great man. And I just wanted to throw it out there, sir. Did you include the letter that we expect him to volunteer then in his retirement for IASP? Yes, sir. I could do that, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, all right, uh, Tom, it looks like academic and extracurricular, and you've got a uh, rather full plate. Yes, I'm going to uh, punt the, um, the uh, two meetings back to Mike to do a summary on that uh, takes less than 45 minutes. So, <laughs> Mike, if you can handle that for me, I'd appreciate it. Yes, sir. We did a couple things last week. We had two meetings, as you know, on Monday and Thursday, and they focused on, one, our reopening um, discussions, which based upon an health, updated health and safety plan. We met on Thursday. We had some further, clarif cl further uh, clarity and clarification and feedback. We updated that as early, as late as, I'm sorry, as late as 4 o'clock today. I did some more updates, and that's ready to bring brought, uh, brought, forward, brought forward for your attention and uh, consideration. Additionally, then we revisit our reopening plans to make sure that the board still felt comfortable with that direction, allowed for some public input there. And again, to reiterate, um, you know, so it's not a hodgepodge, um, there was three options, right? The traditional model, the cyber model, uh, which is called ideal, and the synchronous model that we're working uh, to put in place for our students. Because, look, I got to tell you, uh, Mr. Harley, I'm convinced of 100 percent if anyone can do um, education well, it's going to be our teachers. We're, we have amazing staff. Ideal is the cyber platform. There is a differentiation between ideal and synchronous, in my uh, opinion. Basically, what we're going to do is allow kids to allow teachers to do what they've been doing, and that's use Google Classrooms to com connect and engage with their kids, and allow kids for those who can't make it um, to be able to zoom in and hear a, the lesson and see what's going on in the lesson, which is far different than ideal, which is a total 100% different curriculum, different set of standards, a different program. This allows them, for those kids who are gonna need flexibility, if they get sick, if we have to be flexible on our attendance policy. So it allows that transition to work. And I can't thank the association enough for their leadership and understanding the cause and the need for this. And most importantly, our teachers for meeting the moment. They're quite incredible. We additionally talked about the uh, athletic and extracurricular uh, safety plan. As you know, we have a work group. Uh, that's been meeting made of community residents as well as administration and board members looking at this, revamping it, and making sure that the play is not only being written but followed. And I'm proud to say that that, that plan has been executed, it's been followed, and we're continuing to stay the course and move forward as that. It's also on the agenda this evening for your final adoption. We had a preliminary approval. We wanted to make some changes, so it's on this evening for your consideration. Additionally, what we have on uh, the agenda tonight is an item uh, that authorizes the administration to partner up with AASA, the American Association of School Administrators, and participate in Redefining Ready. And what Redefining Ready does, ladies and gentlemen, it's a neat program that really says, look, let's d look at the college, you know, college and career ready work that we're doing and find different ways to define what college and career ready looks like. So rather than um, passing a keystone, or a PSSA, we're going to look at some measurables, whether it's academic, extracurricular, um, attendance, you know, because it's going to align and dovetail nicely with what we're doing with Indiana County. Now, we won't be ready for a year. We're going to start our journey this year, but it's a neat way to work with some very powerful school districts throughout this country uh, to really revamp and look at how we redefine what college and career ready looks like. And it falls in line with our vision. And it falls in line with your vision. And it falls in line, most importantly, with the state's vision when we talk about career readiness. So I strongly urge that you support that. I know that was also discussed. And the last thing I have is a resolution is on the agenda for this evening that get, grants us some flexibility with regards to uh, the 180-day requirement, 990, 900-hour requirement. In order to have that flexibility, we have to adopt the resolution this evening. And then we also have to send in our calendar uh, to PDE so they can review it and, and approve it. What that does, sir, is it gives us flexibility that in case there is an outbreak or something we have to shut down, we have the access, uh, we have the ability to be excused from the 180-day requirement as well as the 990-900 requirement. For those who are on the call, um, at the secondary level, the requirement is 990 hours a year. At the elementary level, it's 900 
hours a year. So uh, we have now this resolution being brought forward for you to look at that. And then also, uh, Mr. Harley, we also talked about revising the school calendar. The start date was in uh, end of August. We're asking now to start after Labor Day. That does a couple things. It allows us to see what happens after IUPs return, as well as other schools return. It allows families to transition into the mask uh, policy slash requirement and guidance that PD and Department of Health issued. And it allows us time to, you know, hopefully the temperatures won't be as hot. So we're trying to be considerate to our families with the start date. And it makes sense. And more, most importantly, it gives us time with our teachers. Uh, what we're asking our teachers to do is plan for possibly a regular school, uh, a hybrid model, and or a uh, cyber model. So we want to give time and, 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 you know, the four days is really not even enough. We're looking at the amount of work we're all going to have to do, but we have excellent teachers and I have no doubt uh, they'll meet that moment and we'll have to help them and support them. So the time's needed. It makes sense and academic committee uh, support it. So, so Mr. Harley, that is a big overview of the items and uh, I'll turn it back to you, sir. Michael, thank you. Um, the two meetings that we had last week uh, were three, three and a half hours each. We did the deep dive into most of these subjects. Um, and um, I'm, I'm appreciative of the committee, but also of the um, large number of uh, people that uh, tuned in and uh, participated. So what, I, what I'm gonna do, Mike, um, Walter, 5-2 uh, is the resolution. Um, we'll take that first. That um, the motion would be that based on the recommendation of the committee, the board approves the resolution granting flexibility for the 180, 990, 900 requirements to the COVID-19 pandemic as submitted. Second. Second. Um, Walter, uh, discussion on that, please. Yes, it, uh, it's moved and seconded. As Tom suggested, uh, questions, comments, or discussion on this particular item. I think the flexibility is needed, um, especially since we don't know what is in store with regards to the um, pandemic and how things are going to flush out. So um, I'm glad we're hopefully making this request early. I agree, Uta. Um, I think flexibility is the key word for the, what's coming up for the next 90 days is we have to remain in a flexible um, position. So I'm supporting the motion. Okay, anyone else? Uh, nothing heard at this point. Uh, we'll, we'll vote on it. Again, we'll vote in the negative. If anybody wishes to uh, vote against it, please say so now. Hearing none, the chair assumes that it will pass unanimously by all board, pre all board members present. Tom, your next item. Next item, I'm going to call 5.31 uh, ISAD health and safety plan. Um, the motion would be based on the recommendation of the committee, the IASD health and safety plan be approved as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded, uh, renaming it 5.31. Uh, um, questions, comments, or discussion from the board on this item? Um, I would just like to say that, this is Uda, I would just like to say that I know uh, Mike and his team have worked really hard um, to get this plan to the point that it's at. Um, is it perfect? No, but um, I have every confidence that the remaining updates and changes that need to be made um, to make sure that there's consistency within the document um, will be done. And so um, I think we should support this. Uta, I'd like to point out to the board that this is a living document um, and as, uh, as the foundation changes, the ground shifts under us, we'll have to revisit this in any number of times. So I'm, I'm, um, it is, uh, um, I think it's the best it can be with what we know today. Okay, is there, are there any questions or comments from uh, board members? Um, I just want to um, echo what um, Uda said. The time and effort that administration has put into this has been remarkable and much appreciated. Um, as I reviewed it for the umpteenth time this afternoon at 4.30 after Mike resent it out to us again, um, I found a few other things that I um, had comments on that I sent to him. So I do feel confident that he is going to address those. 
but I want to make sure that parents are aware of the one thing that there was some um, confusion on my part um, about was the mask wearing is either mask wearing or six feet apart. And after sitting through six hours of meetings last week, that was still unclear to me. So I want to make sure that our parents know so that if they send their child to school thinking that every child has to wear a mask and they come home and tell them that they didn't wear a mask for X percentage of the day because they were six feet away, um, I don't want that to be a surprise to parents. So I feel like we need to make sure that is clear. Um, and, um, and I love the idea of having the town hall meetings so parents can ask questions. I think that's very informative. And I do recognize that this is a living document. So with that being said, I will support it. Um, but I also know that it, it may change and I want parents and the community to know that as well. And, and Mr. President, if I could just echo Ms. Leeper's comments, it could change tomorrow. You don't know what's gonna happen, what regulations may come out from the Department of Health or the Department of Education, but we have to be flexible. And again, I apologize in advance for all the emails and communications of family. Our, our goal is not to overburden them, but our goal is to keep them informed. And it, it's going to be a living document. What we'll do is um, next at next week's meeting, committee meeting, academic committee meeting, I'll have Ms. Leeper's updates included, um, and then we can review it then. Just make sure we're constantly monitoring it and paying attention to it, because I think that's going to matter, right? As the data changes, the days changes, we have to be flexible and stay attuned, and we'll, we'll do that, sir. Okay, are there any other comments on the, from the board members on this, please? Yes, please. Um, flexibility is the key word. It, it, the flexibility displayed by the team in writing and rewriting and editing and re-editing and doing this document over and over again has been amazing. And I, I would like to um, really caution the parents that the parents also need to be very well, okay, very flexible. If the children go back to school, that's fine. That's wonderful. We don't worry about child care issues, neuter issues, and so forth, but things can change at a minute's notice, and we may end up going to hybrid with, with people in school two days a week, or we may end up going totally online. So for the parents and the public, please try to be as prepared as you possibly can for any of these scenarios. Okay, thanks, and I uh, appreciate your comments as, as well as Tamara Nuta. Anybody else on the board wish to comment um, on our health and safety plan? Okay, hearing none, I do want to sort of re um, uh, reiterate um, some of what Cinda said. I think it's been absolutely phenomenal, um, the, uh, the cooperative attitude the willingness to make these changes, the willingness to turn on a dime to try to accommodate the various uh, issues that have been brought up either by board members or by the public. And, and I certainly applaud the administration for taking that can-do attitude uh, that it will get done. And, and I just can't say enough about that. So again, Mike, Rob, Justin, Jared, the whole team, um thank you thank you for that okay at this point in time jared i think we should take this as a roll call vote uh, because of the criticalness of the issue so if you would please roll call tammy yes Bly? yes cinda broad julia tamarki kukura Aye. Yes. Tom Harley. Mr. Kerr. Mrs. Leeper. Aye. Mrs. Lowry. Yes. Yes. Mr. Shrove. Yes. Motion passes eight to zero. Okay, Tom, you're up again. 
Okay, we'll do um, 5.32, is that correct? Yes, sir, 5.3, yep. Reopening plan. That based on the recommendation of the committee, the IASD health and safety plan be reapproved as presented. Second. Second. Yes, this second. Is, this That's is, the one we just did. Tom, you're at 5.4 on the screen, and it's the reopening plan. Be reapproved as presented. Good, good catch, you. No. I can't see the screen. Tom, look at the screen. Which one are we on? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, mine, mine has, my printed has health and safety twice. So this is the, um, let me remake that motion, all the case. Go ahead. The, mo the motion is that based on the recommendation of the committee, the IASD reopening plan be reapproved as presented. I second that as a yes. thank you. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, we got, we got that part done. Everybody's everybody's good on that now. So, any questions, comments, or discussion on on the reopening plan at this point? Please say now. Okay, nothing. Um, I would like to um, re-emphasize the amount of work that's going into this particular plan. Um, and um, how far it's come and how it's matured. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of effort by the administration, by the board, by outside experts to try to get us the, the best plan that we could put together with what we know today. Um, and I fully support this, moving this plan forward. And Tom, I'd like to, this is Terry Kerr, I'd like to jump on your comments and, and echo them. I. I absolutely believe that the administrative team, the teachers, the principals, the community all came together to, to make this happen. Uh, Mr. Vukovic always talked about the consideration and, and kindness and everything that goes into all his planning. But with that, I'll also say that I'm going to ask for the parents' uh, continued support as we uh, you know, if we do, if this motion does pass and, and the schools do reopen, that we need your continued su support to support this plan. Uh, it can't be successful without you. And uh, I realize that, and I think we all realize that, and I thank you in advance. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks, Terry. Julia and Uta, you both have hot mics. Is there anything you wanted to add, please? Yeah, I, I want to thank the administration for really, um, as Walter put it earlier, turning on a dime between Monday night's meeting last week and Thursday's meeting um, and working with our teachers and the association and IT and everybody who was involved in coming up with a way that we can do synchronous um, online education. So um, I think now that that's part of the plan, I think it's even more robust than it initially was. Um, and I think um, that hopefully our community members um, will help us make this work. I don't think there are any easy answers. I think there's lots of people who have some tough decisions out there. Um, and I recognize that none of this is easy. Um, so, you know, we're, we're right there with you. Um, but hopefully um, the choices and the options that we have out there um, will help you in making a decision that's in the best interest of your student. Walter, I just wanted to echo that, but um... This, particularly on this synchronous plan, the turnaround time in what, 10 days has been, you know, it's almost miraculous. So thank you very much because I think it's a real step forward in innovation for the district. Mr. President, if I can add to that, uh, Ms. Ms. Lowry and Madam Vice President bring up a good point. Ideal is the cyber, 100% cyber through the ingenuity curriculum. What our synchronous is really is nothing more than uh, us opening our, you know, webcams for kids to tune in for those who may need that flexibility because they may be out for a couple of days, they may be sick or their family's going through some things and we want to offer that consideration. So our teachers have met the moment 
the uh, leadership of the union, everyone working together to understand what's best for kids. Uh, and the work that's ahead of all of us is, is pretty, pretty you know, daunting, but we have the right time, the right people and the right team. And our teachers are just incredible and we could do a great job. And it's gonna take some time and some patience is gonna be needed. Work with us. I encourage the families to call the schools, work with us and we'll get it there. But we have a great staff and we'll, we'll meet this moment to the best of our ability, sir. Okay, Mike, thank you. Uh, any other board members? Um, I also I also want to say thanks to the staff and everybody. And when we had that academic meeting last Monday, the amount of people that came and gave their input helped round out so much. And I know we're not going to get it all right, and there's no way we could get it all right. We'd make everybody happy all at once. But this is such a step in the right direction. It is wonderful see everybody coming together like this. I'm just going to take a second and say the same thing. I felt last Monday night, um, I was not very hopeful, but within a week, with actually within four days between Monday and Thursday, um, I think we developed a plan that is able to meet the needs of probably almost all of our families. Um, and I know many, many people that were really wanting a synchronous option. So kudos to everybody who was involved this um, at, with this for the open minds of everybody for the hard work. So um, thank you. Okay. Um, and again, I think the critical issue is here how quickly um, it did turn on a dime and how quickly the administration and the association were able to get put this thing together. Um, if there's if there are no other comments, then at this point in time, I'll again call for a roll call. Uh, Jared, if you would please. Cinder Brode. Yes. Julia Tamarki Kukro. Aye. Tom Harley. Yes. Mr. Kerr. Aye. Mrs. Leeper? Yes. Mrs. Lowry? I'm having technical issues. Yes. Mr. Schroth? Yes. Tammy Blank? Yes. Motion passes eight to zero. Okay, Tom, uh, I think you've got uh, one more that we need to take separately, if you would, please. Tom, you're muted. I, I did a really nice job on that. Based on the recommendation of the committee that the athletics and extracurriculars health and safety plan be approved as written with the understanding that the document will be updated as needed and will be amended to comply with all, all changes required by the PIAA, the WIPIO, PDE, and or the PA Department of Health. Back Second. Here. Okay, it's been moved in second. Um, any questions? discussion or uh, further conversations on this particular uh, plan. Walter, I'd like to thank the ad hoc committee for their heroic efforts at getting this plan to the level that it's at. Um, um, they really um, they really went at this. Uh, the, uh, the administration and the uh, principal, the AD, they all came together and worked, worked um, to make a plan that uh, is reasonable. Um, it's being monitored, um, and, um, and, been, and, it's, and it's functioning. Um, I'm very, very pleased with uh, with the results. Um, Walter, this was um, the hardest motion for me to to wrap my head around that we're doing tonight. I've been reluctant on it. Um, with the addition of the ad hoc committee, I feel much more careful, uh, much more. Um, willing to, to enter into this. I think it's my concern is how much travel these teams do. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. I think we have a good plan to start with. So I am willing to support it. But as I said, this was the hardest one for me to get my head around. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, Jared, your mic's on. Is there anything you wanted to add at this point? No, I was just waiting to do the roll call, sir. Uh, you're you're reading my mind. Okay, before we do that, uh, one final call uh, to any other uh, board members that uh, wish to add further comment, questions, or discussion on this particular motion. Okay, before we take the roll call, I do want to um, uh, point out that I um, I kind of gave uh, Wade a hard time when when he uh, shared with me the some of the training uh, stuff that he had put together, he and, and Greg, and I asked him where his scope and sequence was, uh, since we as a school district seem to always be looking for, for scope and sequence, and he assured me that it will be coming, coming shortly. Uh, but anyway, um, Jared, at this point in time, let's go ahead with that roll call, please. Julia Tamarki Kukuro. Aye. Tom Harley? Yes. Mr. Kerr? Aye. Mrs. Leeper? Yes. Mrs. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shrove? Yes. Tammy Blank? Yes. Yes. Cinder Brode. Yes. Motion passes eight to zero. Okay, Tom, you can proceed with the rest of uh, the, the motions on, under your committee, please. I want to take five, six, and five, seven together. Um, Five six is based on the recommendation of the administration. The board revises the 2020 and 2021 school calendar to make September 8th, 2020, the first day of school. The rest of the motion would be based on the recommendation of the administration. The board authorizes the superintendent to submit to the Department of Education a request under Act 80 for approval for the district to utilize six full additional days during the 2020 2021 school year as follows. August 25, 27, 28, September 1, 2, and 3, 2020. These days will be used for curriculum development. And finally, that based on the recommendation of the administration, the board authorizes the superintendent to submit to the Department of Education a request under Act 80 to cancel August 19, 2020, November 2, 2020, and February 15, 2021 as previously approved Act 80 days for the 2020, 2021 school year. Second. Thank you. Okay, it's moved and seconded on 5.4 and 5.5. Questions, comments, or further discussion on those two motions? Please. What are you, what are you using a um, old printed calendar? It's five six and five seven. On the current on the current agenda uh, on the current agenda. I stand corrected. Thank you, Tom. Question still remains. Any questions, comments, or further discussion? Hearing none, uh, let's vote in the chat room this time. Uh, please indicate uh, um, yes if you approve. Okay, it looks as if uh, that motion passes eight nothing as well. Tom, please proceed. I think I can take the rest of the motions in one piece. I I move that we approve five six five seven. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me start. I move that we approve five eight five nine five ten five eleven. Uh, 512 and 513 as submitted. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, further questions, comments, or discussion on on those motions, if you would, please. Um, I have a question on the ARI contract. I was just um, 
wondering if this is for the new autism support classroom at Ben Franklin. No, uh, Ms. Lever, this is this is for um, we have two uh, behavior specialists that work th that have been working through the district uh, from Airy uh, for probably about three or four years now, uh, and they work with individual students. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, any other comments, questions, or discussion from the board members, please? Uh, nothing heard. Uh, we'll again, again, we'll vote in the negative. If you uh, choose to oppose these, please say no or nay at this point in time. Nothing heard. The chair assumes that the motion's passed unanimously. Uta, I think you're up now, uh, policy and personnel, and I believe you also okay. have an agenda. Yes, thank you. Um, I do not have a committee meeting report. Our next committee meeting is on August the 10th at 530. Um, and um, we do have um, some motions. Um, 6.2 retirement of support staff. The board accepts with regret the letters of resignation from David Dietman, custodian, effective August 6, 2020. Darla Mathie, athletic secretary, effective August 31st, 2020. Cynthia Young, paraeducator, effective July 31st, 2020. And Larry Bodner, custodian, effective August 6, 2020, due to retirement and authorize the administration to post and advertise these positions. Thank you, Terry. Okay, we have um, a motion in and a second. Uh, questions, comments, or further discussion on this particular motion? Um, I just want to thank um, these individuals for their service to the district and wish them all the best in their retirement. I certainly would uh, want to reiterate that. Mike, anything you'd like to add? Yes, uh, we're losing a lot of good people. Uh, th this is, you know, this happens and every year it gets harder and harder. Uh, I thank them for their years of service. They are just an incredible group of people, but like anything else, we'll, we'll find other good people and we'll keep moving forward. But uh, these people are a blessing to us and they are great workers and they're gonna be deeply in the Okay, again, we'll vote in the uh, negative on this. Um, if you wish to vote, uh, vote against these, please say nay at this point in time. Nothing heard. The chair assumes that uh, it passed unanimously. Next next item. Um, 6.3, that the board rescinds the sabbatical leave granted to Larry Knapp, senior high English teacher, by board action on March 9th, 2020, at his request, be approved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, questions or comments from the board? Uh, nothing heard. Again, we'll vote in the negative. Anybody opposing this, please say no or nay at this point in time. Nothing heard. Motion carries. The chair assumes that it was unanimous. Uh, I think you have one more item. Um, I do, and I need somebody to either put it up or shoot it to me in an email real quick because I don't have it. Got it. Thank you. Um, that the board agrees to extend, hold on, I can't read it. Um, that the board agrees to extend the deadline for Act 93 employees and the business manager to use vacation days remaining from 2019 to 2020 from August 31st, 2020 to August 31st, 2021, or give the employee the option to be paid for up to 10 vacation days from 2019, 2020 at the employee's 2019, 2020 daily rate. Second. Second. Utu, would you like to kind of comment on why this is so important as chair? Um, sure. I think um, the um, staff that fall under Act 80 and the business manager have been working really hard um, and not taken time um, this summer and um, even in the spring. And so um, we are trying to um, give them an opportunity to um, be able to use those 
days in the future rather than losing them um, or take the option to be paid um, for up to 10 of those 2019-2020 um, vacation days um, if they haven't used them. It's important that um, folks take the time and get the time and have the time to take to refresh and um, just get away um, the same that we all um, appreciate that time. And given the circumstances um, this spring and currently that hasn't been possible for everybody. So we want to um, make that, at least make that a possibility when it comes to having the days. Okay, Mike, anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, nothing other than your consideration and kindness is appreciated. Our team has been working incredibly diligently. As we talked about at all the meetings over the past several months, things are changing so drastically and quickly. We're having them to, you know, revert and go back and re-engineer. And they've met the moment we met today, and they are updating the plans as we speak. And I'm just incredibly grateful for them and their work and, and to you as well for this consideration. They've done a great job, and I, I'll speak on all their behalf when they say thank you very much uh, for this consideration and kindness. Okay, Mike, thank you. Um, any other comments, questions, or discussion from the board? I, I guess I got to ask this to Terry again. Does Mr. Vukovic fall into this motion? No, I'm not Act 93, um, and thanks, thankfully not the business manager. Um, so I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Don't worry about me. Uh, I am good, uh, but I do not fall under that, sir. Okay, I was going to amend the motion if you need to. No, I, I think I'm good. Thank you, though. I appreciate it, sir. Okay, um, anything else, uh, please say now. Okay, uh, again, we'll vote in the negative. Well, Go well, ahead. Well, do we have, do we have to ask the public or not? Because it was... An addendum. Yes, sir, you would. Okay, at this point in time, um, anybody uh, have... Uh, public comment on the um, on this particular motion um, please say now or indicate yes in the chat room going once twice three times nothing heard all those in opposed to this please say nay um, okay the chair will uh, assumes that it was unanimous, um, uh, hearing none, uh, unanimous, unanimously approved. Terry, um, you're up as Buildings and Grounds. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. There's not been a uh, committee meeting between the last board meeting and this meeting. The next Building Grounds Transportation Committee meeting is August 17th. I'll go to motion 7.2, Ben Franklin ramp elevator project that the board authorizes up to $5,000 be spent on preliminary schematic and design work by form architects for the installation of a ramp and or elevator at Ben Franklin. Okay, Terry, you're Do we hear a second on Terry's motion? Second. Second. Okay, moved. Thank you, Terry. Questions, comments, or further discussion on the Ben Franklin ramp elevator project? One thing I'll make, Walter, starting out here is I want to emphasize that the board and the committee is being very cognitive of the, the you know, state that we're in. We're not out looking to do big projects. This uh, issue has been around since the building has, was constructed, the Ben Franklin building. There's a wing and a partial basement in that school that is only accessed by stairs. So this has been something that has been uh, discussed and has uh, been a hot uh, issue. So we just thought it was prudent to not spend a lot of money, ask our new architect to take 
uh, you look at it and just develop some schematics. Uh, and we're also going to expect with that to also have some cost estimates because to me, a schematic's not that valuable without an estimate that goes along with it. And then uh, this will be discussed at our next building grounds committee also. The schematics will be gone over at that meeting on August 17th. That's all I have to follow. Okay, Terry, thanks. Anybody else have a comment or question in discussion on this item? Um, so I'm just curious. I have not um, been able to attend the last few um, building and grounds committee meetings. Was there detailed talk of this? This is, I, I haven't, I mean, I know this has been talked about for years, but I'm wondering why now? Um, and maybe I missed a discussion that happened recently. Tamara, I'd have to go back, back through the minutes to see when it was discussed. Uh, I can't tell you off the top of my head. And I, and I agree, that's why in my you know, explanation is, you know, we just thought, you know, we would spend a small amount of money to look at this schematically at this time, and then it'll be discussed at the next committee meeting to see where we go with it next. Do we have previous schematics or proposals by previous architects that have looked at this? Uh, uh, Tamara, yeah, we did. They were going to tear the building down and build a brand new one. So what we? So I thought at some point, I thought at some point in the past we did have a specific assessment of just um, putting in a ramp or an elevator. I think Walter was exaggerating a little bit from what I understand, and that was uh, prior to my time on the board. But the options that they came up with were pretty extensive and expensive. What we did, uh, the building grounds committee met with this architect at the school and went over in depth with them a scope that we would be comfortable with possibly at some point. So we really kept uh, the scope small and uh, the architect thought that he would, they would be able to come up with some schematics that would, you know, dovetail with a smaller type project, dissimilar to what previous architect uh, work done. Terry, there's a big difference between a ramp and an elevator. What are you leaning towards? Big cost difference as well. Uh, some things that were discussed there was, uh, was an elevator, was a ramp, but the ramp was not, the ramp was different than what was proposed before. The ramp was, uh, very close to the existing stairs that are there now and didn't go from like one wing to the end of the other wing or you know along that big glass hallway area you know they they think they're able to get a, a shorter ramp to be able to traverse that uh, elevation between the main floor elevation and the ramp or the wing elevation Terry, if I may for a moment, um, answering Tamara's question. Tamara, there's never been a study in my memory of, of just answering this question um, of how to gain access to that middle wing. Almost a third of the building is inaccessible and it requires any student or a class of a student to be um, scheduled onto one of the flat areas. The um, And on top of that, then where the where the basement space is, where the, I believe it's the nurse and some counselors, that is not accessible. Um, and we're using it, um, and this would give this would give the administration, um, if those if the basement and the and that upper wing was accessible, then you could group all your third grades together and all your fifth grades, all your all your second grades together, as opposed to right now they're scattered around the building depending on the student and the and the faculty needs. Um, I have, I, have, I have not seen a sketch from any architect um, that, um, that, that answers, answers this particular question. Um, so this study would be restricted to getting access to that wing 
I believe there's six or eight classrooms on the top floor and there's, and there's a half a basement space that, that would be accessible, which is a tremendous a boon to the, to the planning in that building. Um, the, um, the question on the, on the ramp, Julia, um, I don't really know which one would be less expensive. Um, the, the elevator um, has a smaller footprint, um, but it has a bigger, bigger individual price tag, but a ramp is going to be, uh, we have to go up five feet and down five feet. So we're talking about ramps that are 50 feet long. So the square footage becomes a, a factor. Um, this, would, this study would look at some of those options um, and, um, and put some price tags on, 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 on them for the committee's um, discussion. Thank you. Um, so just, just thinking of the space and the large incline over a short amount of time, a short amount of space. Um, and I don't think that would be able to be achieved on the right hand side because that is the steps. And Tom, I don't believe the nurse is down there because that would violate or the ability for children to get there. So I believe the nurse is on the first floor where everybody can access her or him. There are some counselors, um, there are some staff there. But before we, but before we spend money even looking at this, so the so we know the architects have been out there, and we know this is a possibility that they can put a ramp in that hallway. I, I don't I don't think the, the it's not a ramp in the hallway it'd be a ramp to the left hand side of the hallway um, in between the uh, in between the wings and, and that's what they have to study if um, the ramp can only be one in 12 but it's going to have to have a landing halfway up there's some geometries that are not negotiable um, it may not fit um, and, and the elevator may be the only answer but this gives us a chance then to look at that and see what um, what a reasonable answer is and what a budget number would be to, to, to uh, alleviate that situation. Tom, I don't know, or no, Terry, excuse me. I don't understand. Um, I'm, I mean, it's one thing to spend the $5,000. It's another thing. I, you know, again, I go back to the deferred maintenance list and I'd like to send this back to the committee so that we can sort of understand um, you know, we get a better idea of what we're looking at because there's an awful lot of projects that need to be done. Um, and I don't know where I don't, I, I haven't, I, like Tamara, I haven't been to your last meeting, so I don't quite understand why this is, be, why this is important right now when we're in the midst of all of this, um, going into the midst, in the midst of a lot of um, changes and a huge opening coming up in just five weeks. This is Kelly Urbani, um, principal over at Ben Franklin, and I just wanted to let you know that there are actually 12 classrooms that are not accessible um, on that second landing, not six or seven. So it's a significant amount of classrooms. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Kelly, for correcting that. So I guess I feel comfortable with Julia's recommendation that this goes back to committee. I don't feel like I can vote on this tonight before I know more information. Um, because as I'm picturing the whole scene and recalling previous discussions, I'm just not sure I understand how this would be um, beneficial to do at this point in time. The study is beneficial. We can decide whether it's too expensive or not. but but it's getting those classrooms accessible seems to me to be a high priority. Um, and it would seem to me to be, to make the building tremendously more useful. Um, with, with that many classrooms up five feet, it becomes a very difficult thing for the principal to schedule the classes. Um, we're asking for, the committee has made the recommendation for the $5,000 in order to study this problem and determine a cost. We're not asking for permission to do the, to, to do whatever shows up out of this, um, um, but but to, to have an answer and a and a budget price so we can so we can talk about it more intelligently. Right now, we don't know the cost, but of what this solution would be until we do this until we do this very focused study. And 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 that is that is the committee's recommendation to the board. Sending it back to the committee for additional information. We are trying to get additional information. 
but we can't get it until we hire these people to do the work. So Mrs. Urbani, how um, large is any one cohort in your school, any one grade level? My largest cohort right now is 119. So how many classrooms does that equate to? Six. So, okay. And Mr. President, I mean, it's up to the, the board, but you know, this is something we entered into agreement with this architect firm. We could take it to committee, continue to work on it, and be ready to go at the second meeting in August, unless the board wants to take it back tonight. I mean, I'm just, you know, I want to see what direction you want to go. Uh, okay, Mike, thank you for, for, for that. Um, I do have to, I do have to point out, I mean, I understand uh you know this is um those things that we start have to start taking a look at um i do want to reiterate something that that, um, that that tom said and that is that um members of the committee and i think uh, there were some other members of the board actually met with the architects um there were some members of the administration um, they took a look at it, did a walkthrough, um, and then uh, the architects came back to us. The architects came back to us with um, uh, the idea that we could, uh, in order to take this to the next level, we had to basically um, engage them in the development of these schematics. I'm looking at this as a um, uh, similar situation as to trying to get some roof estimates from um, uh, from some of the folks before we uh, got got to a point in, in making a decision about what to do with the roof. Um, so I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with delaying this till um, uh, the, the next um, um, committee meeting. The question I would ask is, how much are we actually going to uh, resolve since we kind of are to a point where we need to take the next step. Um, so it's it's really um, it's really up up to the board. Since it is in a form of a motion, um, and again, we always want the board to rule in the collective here. Um, if there, are, I'll ask for any more uh, questions, comments, or discussion. But I think what will happen then is the the board will take a vote and. Um, you know, we can go from there. Um, so at, at this point, do I hear any other discussion or comments or questions? Walter, I think um, what I'm hearing is that there's just some concern as to how this got to this point from the committee to um, being showing up, being on the agenda when we know there's other things that have been on the list and just wanting to just get a better understanding of what, how that process works. Um, I don't think anybody's saying this isn't important uh, or needed, but I think for me, I'm just not clear on the process and how things are being identified that we want to um, explore further. Thanks, Uta. I tend to agree. There, there um, Walter, I can. I can okay, so go, go ahead, Julia. Julia, Mike is not on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Walter. I agree with Uta. I'm not necessarily against this. It's probably a great idea, but money is short right now, and I haven't quite recovered from the pricing on a new roof for East Pike. So I don't quite understand where the priorities are, particularly with relative to this deferred maintenance list that we go over at the audit and finance committee meeting. And I'd like to coordinate it so that we really come up with by year end a list. And I understand we have to study this, but I don't know why we have to study it and have an answer from the architects by the next, by this next meeting. I don't, I don't quite get the rush of this. That's all. Okay. So one of the ways we could handle this would be if somebody wanted to table it and uh, send it back to committee for further review um um that may be a way to re to resolve this at this point well i would just like to hear how urgent terry thinks this is if it's really urgent then i'm not gonna you know because
Well, Jerry, I mean, we could, so, yeah, we could debate urgency the rest of the night. I mean, what's urgent to someone is not urgent to another. But uh, if we want to table this, I'm fine with that. I'm not sure what we're going to gain at tabling it and taking it back to a committee meeting because the the need is already developed or, or there. So I guess the only thing we would be uh, getting out of the committee meeting is, you know, seeing if there's consensus on at least doing this and getting this combated. Well, I would be willing to have a, a sort of a joint discussion at the next audit and finance meeting so that we go back to this deferred maintenance list that we look at several times a year and really find out really what oh, oh, do we need to develop a new list? Um, oh, I think. I mean, my opinion, the list is good, but, you know, the roof project has been on that list for how many years, and, you know, it doesn't seem like that list, I don't know, does it need narrowed down or prioritized? Or? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we're getting at, and I, I'd be happier, I, I would commit to doing that in September once we get through the opening of school. But I think to, to, to right now um, is just a little bit difficult because, of course, the staff has to become involved, and that's distracting them from this main thing of getting the schools reopened and going through all the work and the various options that people are going to be choosing from. I'm real concerned about that in the next five weeks that we get that done properly. The only comment I'd like to make is that we're asking for $5,000 in order to study the problem and develop a number. This is a hundred thousand or a two hundred thousand dollar problem. That it's not a five thousand dollar problem. It gets a third of the building accessible, um, a third of the classrooms accessible for for a price. And the problem, Julie, is we don't know the price tag of, of, of a big project. All right, all right, I'll support it then if you feel that strongly about it. But you know. There's an awful lot of other people that see other problems. So, all right, I won't ask to table it. If, if you feel that strongly, Tom, I'm fine with it. I, I do feel strongly about it. I also know that, that, that it's gonna take, we won't authorize this construction to until summer of next year, but if we don't get the study done now, we won't have the information to, to push it forward to this, this summertime. Well, the only way I want to support this is if I have a commitment from you and Terry and the committee and our committee that in the audit and finance is that we actually do get a better deferred maintenance maintenance list. And, and having, we go through and we have short committee meetings and we have these long lists and every single one of those items is of huge priority. And I understand I went to Ben Franklin many, many years ago. I remember those steps. I didn't think they were such a big deal. So at the time, you know, your kids are up and down steps. So I really don't quite understand the underpinnings of why this is necessary, but I don't mind spending the $5,000, but that's on the condition that we aren't going to continue to just throw motions on out of nowhere about suddenly this comes up. And I wasn't at the last meeting, so I'm not being critical. I'm not angry about it either, but um, we've got to get, the two committees have to get coordinated. There's no question. This can't be operating in a vacuum, this list, because the list is pretty crucial. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. I'm going to chime in here if it's OK. Um, I have been at all the meetings. And I was surprised to see this motion on the agenda because I've been waiting patiently to hear what the architects had to say after the walkthrough that they did with the administration, with some of the board members, and so forth. And I realized that that walkthrough of Ben Franklin happened. We were all wearing masks, so it was during the shutdown, and everything has just been crazy. But Walter said that the architects got back to us and said that we'd have to do a study. I think what's causing some of the confusion and frustration is that the rest of the board never heard that. So all of a sudden, now this appears, and it seems like it's a sudden thing. Um, I also want to say, too, that when we went and did the walkthrough to Ben Franklin, I thought that um, some of the understanding was that we were going to use this smaller project as a way to see how well the board worked with the new architect, see how well 
um, they listened to our, our wishes and how well they worked with the administration. So considering that it is a small project and um, it is something that needs to be done, I, I'm willing to support it, but I wish that we had been notified that they had gotten back to us and that this was, was you know, pending. Well said, Cinda. And, and the only thing that I'll disagree with you on is I'm not calling this a project. So let's, you know, it, it's to get us some schematics to look at some point in the future, possibly doing a project. Okay, so Jared, I want to put make sure we have on the next audit and finance meeting a discussion about the priorities on the deferred maintenance list. So if, if, if we have to sit there for two hours and get it figured out with buildings and grounds, but at but just shooting these motions off when we're not, I just it's just it's not like we're rolling in money, and we we still have a sizable deficit despite all the tremendous work of the um, staff and Jared uh, getting the, the number, de the deficit down from three and a half million down to, you know, just over a million. That's been huge. So, you know, every little thing counts. And I think we've, so I'll, I'll support this, but I want to be sure that we've, that, that we all show up and get on that meeting and we, we hash it out. Thank you. Okay, is there um, any other comment or question before we uh, take a vote? Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'll support it now, but I'm going with Julia about hashing this out because I'd like to see, you know, no problems with the ADA or any uh, things that are coming up uh, happening anymore. It just feels like a surprise kind of sometimes. Okay, anyone else? Um, nothing heard. Uh, Jared, let's do this as a roll call, please. Tom Harley? Yes. Mr. Kerr? Aye. Mrs. Leeper? Yes. Mrs. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shrove? <clears throat> yes. Tammy Blank? Yes. Cinder Broad? Yes. Julia Tamarki Kukuro? Yes, with conditions. Thank you. Motion passes eight to zero. Okay, Julia, you're up. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we, we did not have a committee meeting, but I would just like to thank my, I think I speak for the committee in saying that um, the numbers you gave us tonight on the cyber schools are really stunning in many ways. Um, it's a huge, the million dollars is a huge chunk out of our budget. And the other school district that really struck me is Purchase Line, which came under um, the senator's jurisdiction. That's a small district to have to haul that kind of money out of its, but to take out of its tax base every year. And the problem I have with it is that um, I dug in a little bit this weekend on the um, report of Pennsylvania Auditor General uh, Eugene uh, Deep at Squall's report. And it is surprising what few numbers we have coming out of cyber schools, including what they're being paid, the salaries. So I caution people. I think if we send a letter, it, it appears the legislature does not want to move because we've been talking about this for 18 months, that something has to be done um, to take some pressure off the school districts. It appears they are not willing to move, but I do think that if nothing else, they've got to get some more audit procedures in place so that we understand what their numbers really are and the public can look at that because um, to take that kind of money out of these legislative districts, it's a big, big number for us. So thank you for um, doing that. Um, I think we can pretty much take, I can't see the um, 8.4, but I think that we can take 8.2, 8.3 and 8.4 as a single motion or three together if there's not an objection. So I'm going to move 8.2 that the current bills be approved as submitted. 
um, 8.3, it's a pleasure to move that the board accepts the donation of a picnic table and umbrella from Mark and Wendy Rice uh, for Eisenhower at elementary school. It's really nice. And then 8.4 is the ambulance service agreement submitted for the board's review as a contract between the IASD and the Citizens Ambulance Service. Um, I lost it. Um, okay. For the purpose of providing fully equipped and staffed ambulance for all varsity, junior varsity, and junior high football games at a cost of $4,800, that the contract between IASD and Citizens Ambulance Inc. for the 2021 school year be approved as it's su submitted. Thank you. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second. Uh, questions, comments, or discussion on these three motions. I have a question about I have a question about the citizens ambulance agreement. Um, when I reviewed it today, it said that I believe we have to pay before the beginning of the football season. Um, so, what would happen if the football season is ended? because of covid do we are we out that money it does have a i think a per game or a per hour fee if we go over but i just um yeah i was curious about because there are so many unknowns i would hate to spend almost five thousand dollars um if we were not able to use their services in, in miss sleeper this is jared I, I did we usually approve this earlier in the year but i have been going back and forth with them um, and they're working remotely, so it's not the easiest thing to do is to communicate with their business staff. Um, but I did confirm with them prior to putting this on here that if for some reason football season does not happen, we don't pay that, that portion of the service here. Part of the 4800 also pays for ambulance service if for some reason they have to come to one of our schools um, for students, staff, visitors at our school the fee for an ambulance ride at that point is then waived um, for anybody if, if they have to come to our school for any reason. So the $4,800 isn't strictly football. There would be about, a, I think, a $1,300 charge if football season was canceled um, just for the service they would provide our schools alone. Thank you. Okay, any further questions, comments, or discussion? Uh, I think we can take this as a uh, you know, vote in the negative on this. Uh, if anybody is opposed to these three motions, please say no at this time. Nothing heard. The chair assumes they pass unanimously. Okay, it looks like we're up to item number nine, um, uh, closing. Uh, we have no discussion items tonight. Is there anybody out there? that has public comment on the agenda items, um, please either say now or indicate in the chat room. Walter, there's a, Faye Broadwick says she has a public comment. Okay, Faye, if you're on the line, if you'd like to give your public comment, please do so now. I say again, Faye Bradwick, if you're on the line and you'd like to give public comment. Okay, there it is. Did I get okay. it now? Okay. Now I got it. I didn't know where the clicker was for me. Okay. Um, yeah, my question has to do with the synchronous classroom uh, for the students who will be at home. And there was some discussion this week about how will that be done in terms of the technology. Is it going to be using the Promethean boards that you have now, plus the Google Meet or Google Classroom or whatever the software is? Yes, ma'am. Um, the answer is it could be a combination of those things. Uh, depending on how we can work the schedule, specifically at the junior and senior high school, teachers may have a dedicated class uh, where they only work with online students, uh, in which case they might employ different technique. But if they are, if the student is forced into a situation where they are just um, joining the classroom via the Google platform, 
through the Google Classroom that the teacher will maintain anyway. Um, they would use the Promethean board, share the screen so the child could see everything that was going on on the board, hear the teacher, hear the questions from the class, ask their own questions, um, either through the chat or through the microphone. Okay, Robert, follow up to that for a little more clarification. Um, is there going to be a camera system or something that will provide enough lighting and enough good viewing of what's on the Promethean board so that the students that are at home will be able to read it okay? Yes, ma'am. The uh, Promethean board will be shared right through the PC, so it wouldn't even need a camera. It would be shared just like we share the, the uh, agenda for this meeting or a question for this meeting. We just pop it up on the screen. The teacher may have to adjust the Zoom, um, but other than that, the student should be able to set their settings at their, that the Promethean board takes up their entire screen and they have no problem viewing it. Okay, my last question related to that technology for the Symphonius has to do with the chat feature on the side of the screen. Now, if students are trying to respond to the teacher and their classmates with the chat feature, how is the teacher going to be able to handle, and this would have to do with the teacher who is dealing with in-person students and the at-home students at the same time. Have you thought about a solution for that? Yes, ma'am, we have. There's um, Rob, 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 let, yes, me, let me get a step in. Uh, uh, Faye, um, we certainly want to answer your questions, um, but you know, our public comment is usually not meant to be a um, give and take discussion like we have during the committee meetings. Um, okay. If, if you've got something that you want to, you know, tell us for the benefit of the public, please, please do so. If, if, if there's technical questions that you need answered, um, uh, my recommendation would be for you to um, contact the administration offline and then um, they can certainly share those um, um, uh, questions or answers on the on the website um, if, if other people had had similar similar questions okay that's fine that was my last question it's just these were a lot of things that had been coming up on Facebook discussions and so I just thought I'd share them with you okay thanks I, I we do appreciate that and and again I think um, um, uh, Rob or Mike or or you know, one of the principals certainly would be willing to uh, uh, have a little more detailed conversation with you. And again, um, if those are issues that are out there in the community, I'm sure we can put those on the website uh, so that the entire community knows what's going on. Um, okay. but, but yes, thank you for your input, Faye. Um, believe me, we're stronger together and we appreciate it. We just need to get the comments in the right venue. That's all. Okay, thank and you. Ms. Ms. Bradwick, if you give me a call at the office tomorrow, I'd be happy to have a discussion about this or anything else. Okay. 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 Um, we had some enclosures this evening. Uh, we also had an executive session uh, before the meeting to discuss personnel items. Our next board meeting will be 7 o'clock on August the 10th. It's a regular board meeting for general purposes. We will have an academic meeting on August the 3rd, policy and personnel on August the 10th. May I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded. We'll again vote in the negative. Uh, not hearing anything, we now stand adjourned. Thank you again all for attending. Mr. Vukovic, Josh Woodis in here. I was wondering if you could stay behind. Yeah. Yeah, Josh, I could do that. Okay. Um, um, my question is actually concerning the plan. Sure. So uh, I know that it is a living document and things can change uh, on a moment's notice, but as of tonight with this plan, where would Indiana school district be opening under? Would it be under green phase, yellow phased? What? Yeah, what it means, Josh, is we're opening under a green phase, which will have three options for family. That includes uh, a five-day week for those kids who want to come back, a hybrid model that, in my opinion, is more suited for the secondary kids, and as well as the 100% online, uh, the ideal model for those who want to go there. So that's what we look like opening up here in the fall. 
So that would be then um, the students then have the choice of those three options? They would. They would. We sent a survey out in, uh, I think, May, June to our families, maybe June to our families saying, look, take the time, look at the options and see what suits you best. And then in the meantime, we are required to do the health and safety plan. So I think we'll have more families complete the survey as a result of them being able to view the health and safety plan that they'll be emailed sometime tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Mike, just wanted to ask if it's fair to say that there's really four four options. One would be a kid doing 100% uh, all day brick order or 100% all day on the uh, Google class or the hybrid, a mix of those two as they as they need to, whether they're being quarantined or able to go to school. And then the fourth being, is that a fair description that there's four options or is it is that too uh, too full of description? There are fewer options available for the kids. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm looking at it, um, three, right? The the traditional model, the ideal model, and the hybrid. Each one of them has some flexibility based upon a kid's needs and their, their wherever they're at with you said illness. I mean, you can look at it four. We're looking at three, and I don't want to mitigate your um your uh, your input on it. That's something I didn't think about. And but. Uh, Rob, Mr. V, if I could step in there, I think really is this. I'm not sure I'm talking to, but I really think you should look at it as two choices. They can either have their children come to school full time, or they can choose some sort of online learning. That's really the choice they have. Within the online learning, they have several options within there. So the one option would be our asynchronous model, which is our traditional program, our, our ideal classroom where the students would learn through a, um, a learning program on their own time, when they work, when they can. Right. The second option within that distance learning would be synchronous learning, where they are hooked up with a teacher. They have to attend class as normally scheduled. At, you know, if class is 810 for English, they are there at 810, um, or they're marked absent, just like they normally would be in school, and they go through a learning with the teacher synchronously. And then the third option is really an option for children with whose parents would like to keep them home. However, um, because of some health concern, but for whatever reason, they cannot leave them home. So they're going to be learning online and separated from the other kids because of their health con condition. However, they will physically come to the building, but be taught by one of those other two methods, if that makes sense. Uh, okay. <laughs> did that, did that make it more or less confusing? Well, I, no, that's okay. But I, ideal also is a, a, a possible 50-50 split of going to the going to a building in the morning, taking ideal in the afternoon. You can absolutely. That, that's kind of a gray area thing too. Okay, so I I think I can I I can explain it based on all this. And we're going to have a publication coming out this week as well. Um, that's going to clarify all that. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Mike. Absolutely. Thanks, Mike. Absolutely, Josh. Um, Rob, are you good? Is there anything else you want to address? Anything else before we have anyone on the, on the line? I'm good if you guys are good. Okay, and then you'll call Faye. Miss Faye, you're okay. You can rob connect tomorrow. Is that okay, Miss Faye? Yeah. Okay. And Rob, see, there's two more questions. Um, one from a Jamie and one from Jennifer. If we could just follow up with them tomorrow as well, would that be okay? Yes, sir. Let me uh, – don't turn it off yet, Randy. <laughs> Yeah, I will uh, contact you guys tomorrow. Okay. Okay, everyone. Have a good night.